Hey guys, Akil here. If you frequent the podcast and you know that a common theme to success is productivity and efficiency, and that's exactly why I chose Spotify for podcasters. Not only can I schedule, edit, and monetize from a single place, but I can also record from my phone, you know, just in case one of those random ideas pops into my head and I got to get it out before I forget about it. Spotify for podcasters also helps me take the conversation to you guys, the fans, by allowing me to do video, share polls, and ask questions, which is, well, what keeps the show rolling? So if you're looking for the easiest way to streamline the podcasting process and maybe, you know, put a few extra bucks in your pocket at the end of each month, check out Spotify for podcasters. I use it. I love it. I recommend it. So a common misconception in the market is that if you want to be a fundamental trader, you have to have gone to a four-year college and been an economics major. In today's podcast, we're going to talk about an easy way, or I guess a simple way, that you can understand fundamentals by being self-taught. Again, what I've found is that, you know... Fundamental analysis, and and I love speaking to. I don't know if you guys know Anthony Chung. We brought him in for a workshop years ago. But what I love about Anthony Chung is that I, I like to say he is you know how we are realistic traders when it comes to technical analysis and, and giving you the reality of what trading looks like and, and all that fun stuff. He's pretty much the same when it comes to fundamental analysis. And for the longest time, I shied away from fundamental analysis. One, because I was taught that, you know, when I learned to trade, I was taught that you had to be technical or fundamental. Like there is this split down the middle. It had to be one or the other. And that's the way my my mentor trained me. Now, what I ended up learning later on is that you don't necessarily have to be technical or fundamental in how you trade the markets, but as a newer trader, as a beginning trader, right? We spoke before about having core principles. You do need to decide what is going to be your main focus, right? I don't know how you guys have gone in your path. Have you guys experimented with both technicals and fundamentals or, or have you chosen one or, or the other? Because I think as, as a newer trader coming in, again, you don't know what you don't know. If you're bouncing between both and you don't have kind of this, this guiding light, you're never going to go anywhere because technical trading and fundamental trading are completely different games, right? Obviously, technicals are using the charts, looking for historic price patterns that, you know, historically repeat over time and, and give you an edge. Fundamental analysis is using reports, using data, using news and, and making your decision based on that. And I'm not saying one is better than the other. They both have different purposes, especially if you're going to be a, a trader or an investor. But essentially, they are two different philosophies on the market. So imagine if you are a new trader coming in and you're trying to do both, right? You're, you're not really mastering anything because in a way they're conflicting. Um, Greg says only technicals, but making notes on news events during testing. And yeah, you know, so... What I, what I liked about Anthony Chung is this, and this has been my philosophy for, for fundamentals, because I came into trading, um, although I was an investor, I wasn't really strong with fundamentals in the stock market. I, I, I was taught by my investing mentor to be more of a common sense type of trader. So I wasn't necessarily, I mean, I was reading reports because I thought that that's what you had to do and looking at figures and data and all that fun stuff. But the bulk of my decision making in the stock market came from putting together relationships. I'd, I'd have an idea on one thing and then I'd allow that idea to branch off into other things. And, and basically I, I looked at it as a common sense investment where one plus one equals two. My job is to find the one plus one and then see where that two come from and then hopefully find a cheaper version of that two to invest in. So I didn't have a, a lot of capital. Um, a good example is, and the easiest one I can give you is, um, I, I guess Apple real quick where you know, you know know I was invested in Apple. Apple was getting bigger at the time right the iphone was a new thing and you can you can see that apple had this was the big fish in the market right and it was creating a lot of waves a lot of momentum um, i did have an investment in apple but after i liquidated it because again i didn't have a lot of money and i i basically doubled my return and, and and you know was scared and got out 
I started looking for the attachments to Apple. Okay, so who are the people that make Apple parts? Who makes the screen? Who makes the, the parts for the phone? Who makes the computer chips, right? Um, most of the time, these are all the time, I should say, for Apple specifically, these were cheaper companies. So you can buy those cheaper companies and look for those small fish to kind of just hang on to the tail of the, the fin, the fin, I guess, of the big fish. Um, but trading wasn't the same. When I went to the Forex market, I, I know nothing about economics, right? I knew nothing about economics. I didn't know about GDP. I didn't know about interest rate decisions. I didn't know about any of these data figures. And I, I you know, the closest I got was a micro and macroeconomics class in college that I failed. So I was really afraid of fundamentals. And I, in my mind, I even thought that I wasn't smart enough to use fundamentals. So it made technicals the, the easy play to go to. But and, and, I, and I did stand on that hill of technicals rule, fundamentals drool, like, <laughs> like little kids teasing each other. Um, I did stand on that hill for a long time, but that's because I was in the point in my trading where I had to convince myself to I had to fully invest in one way of doing it because that was the only way I was actually going to do it. Um, but as I got older, right, you see the balance that technicals and fundamentals play together. Fundamentals have a role. Technicals have a role. I'm still technically biased. I think technicals give us a lot more information because, you know, fundamentals give us the event, right? Technicals give us the destination. They also paint a story of what the market actually thinks and feels and expects because at the end of the day, the price chart is nothing more than a visual representation of all of the market's participants, right? So everything I do, everything you do, everything big banks do, that is represented on a price chart. So if we understand how to read a price chart correctly, we can read the story that the market is telling us. We can read what it likes, what it doesn't like, what it thinks. Um, fundamentals don't necessarily give us that information. And a good example is going to be with today's interest rate decision, where, again, I told you that we've got people on both sides of the markets. I, I, I don't think, I mean, well, obviously we're going to hike, but here's, here's a good example, right? So we're supposed to hike by 25 basis points today. And if you go back to kind of fundamental one-on-one, -on -one, interest rate hike should mean strength for the currency, right? Would you guys agree? If we go back to the basics, like economics 101, the biggest gear in kind of the, the trading kind of machine is that strength goes to currency strength goes to the currency with the higher interest rate currency weakness goes to the lower week interest rate right so if you just look at things from a very basic standpoint okay an interest rate hike right should mean dollar strength but the fact is that the market doesn't actually care about the hike right although the forecast in front of you says previous 5.0 forecasts 5.25 that's already been marked in, right? We, we've already known, or the market has already known that this is gonna happen for months. The market cares about what's gonna happen next. Is Powell gonna come out at the press conference and say, we're gonna continue to hike even more and continue to be aggressive, rah! Is he gonna come out and say, ah, we're gonna hold steady and think about it from now and reevaluate the circumstances, right? The normal kind of important people talk. Or is he going to be like, you know what? We're going to get in, right into a cutting cycle, right? That's what the market cares about. The market cares about what's next. So it's very easy to get sucked into thinking it's as simple as looking at a number and anticipating what the result's going to be. Price giving you, quote unquote, or the market giving you, quote unquote, a positive number, but also seeing a negative reaction. And it's because the market cares about what's next. So... My approach to the market has been from a fundamental perspective is to kind of do what Greg says, right? Take notes, right? When you see news events come out, one, take notes on what moves the market, right? That is going to change over time, but you want to be aware of that. I, I did a podcast yesterday. Um, man, I'm so, still mad. I lost about 50 episodes of unreleased Trading Coach podcast, guys. Um, I've got my, it's, I, I, I got all my stuff on the external hard drive. There's literally like, there's a million things on that hard drive. And guess what? The, the one thing that won't open is my trading coach podcast folder. The one thing. So I'm really pissed off. I got, I, I, I sent it to a specialist. 
specialist is telling me that like he's going to try and recover it but if not he's got to send it to this other specialist and it might cost a lot of money to get back and now i'm thinking to myself like is it worth it yo is it worth that money but i'm really pissed off but i did a podcast the other day kind of talking about now i had a, a a brain fart now where am i at no i lost it i lost it i lost the rant guys i lost the rant darn it but anyway the point is, we, we um, what I was mentioning in the podcast is that we we're talking. I was talking to someone on our, our platform the other day about Excel spreadsheets and tracking finances and, and stuff like that. And I mentioned in the podcast about you know it's one thing to just track your trades by looking at your broker statement and stuff like that whenever they send it to you. It's another thing to actually write them down and journal. And the same thing goes for your personal finances because when you're tracking them personally you get a better feel for the market. If you just look at your broker statement once a month or once a quarter, yeah, it gives you good or bad, win or loss, but you don't really have a feel for the market. When you're personally tracking it and writing them in and logging them into a journal, and this is why I like doing the manual stuff, even with manual back testing, you get a, a little better feel of what the market is doing. And fundamentals are the same way because we're gonna go through different market conditions and different market conditions uh, different things are going to be important, right? Sometimes jobs are going to be important. Sometimes inflation-related news is going to be important. Sometimes if you're looking on a, a you know, a, a news calendar, sometimes your red news will have no impact, right? Red's supposed to be high impact. Some of your yellow news, which is supposed to be low impact, will have a big impact. So like Greg says, you know, what I like to do in the market is I like to keep track of the market. I like to look what news events come out. I look to see if they affected the market or not, and then I take notes, right? Because we're going to know what affects the market well before your forexfactory.com changes it from yellow to red, right? If you, It's only going to change it to yellow to red after it's already been high impact for a little bit. But if you do that, you'll have a good feel of what matters and what doesn't matter. And that allows you to make better decisions on, hey, I should avoid this. I should run for cover when this news event comes out. Or... I should trade right through it. And over time, you begin to learn more and more about these news events, what affects what, what role it plays in the market. And before you know it, you're not a fundamental genius, right? You're not good enough to go on a talk show and and uh, or give a dissertation on, on fundamental analysis and economics and stuff like that. But you're good enough to understand what's coming out, what it means, and how to make the best decision for your trading off of it. Um, so I do think it's a good hobby to, uh, or a good habit. That's what I did over time. And this is what Anthony Chung did over time is he said, forget about all the stuff they teach you in school. Just pay attention. Just pay attention. If you consistently pay attention to what's happening and take those little notes, you'll learn so much. Right. You'll learn so much. So if you want to get better at fundamental analysis, don't be discouraged. Don't think that you have to go to, you have to, go to school and have this degree in it. Just pay attention to what's happening. Pay attention to what's being said or what's being done. And then look to see how that affects the market. And not only will it give you a good idea of what announcements are important, but it will also give you a good idea for the feel of the market. And I guarantee you're gonna see something like that today during our press conference, right? Whatever way the market, market moves, come back the next day, read some articles. It will tell you kind of exactly what the market is thing. Hope you guys enjoyed the show. Keep showing your support. Subscribe on your favorite podcasting app. Also leave me a rating and a review. And please share this content with your social media friends. You even tag me in it as well at Akil Stokes RTM. I love to see the love. I love to spread the message. I love meeting new people and getting new ideas. That's how we keep this podcast fresh. It is for you. It is by you. So keep up the good work.